Morning, folks. I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. Back down here at the Pathfinder Outdoor Classroom. Back in another segment in our series, 10 Minutes to Better Navigation. What we're going to talk about today is using the orienting lines on your compass to factor an azimuth on the map. And I don't see this technique taught. And it's an excellent technique for on-the-fly navigation. Because you don't need any other tools except your map and your compass to get this done. You don't need to worry about orienting the map. All you have to worry about is two things. A, you should set the declination of your compass if you have that capability ahead of time so you don't have to think about the conversion factor on the fly. And the second thing is you have to orient the compass both directionally on the leg that you plan to travel and with the map. You don't need to worry about orienting the map. We'll talk about that in a demonstration right now. Okay, let's talk about setting the declination of our compass first, all right? If you take your compass and you put north at the top of your compass, and this is for a Sunto MC2 that we're talking about now, your compass may vary. If you turn your compass over, you have an arrow at the bottom and you have a scale that goes in both directions. One side says east declination, one side says west declination. That's to make it real easy on you. Now, there is a screw right here, and I'm not even sure you can see it in the camera, but it's right there. And these little screwdrivers on a Swiss Army knife are the perfect thing for that. Now, they do have a tool on most of these compasses, a metal tool that you can use for that, but I, they tend to bend, okay? You can see that one's already a little bit bent. So I prefer this tool. And you insert it into that screw and you turn that screw. And what that does is it moves this arrow from zero, either westerly or easterly, depending on your declination. We have six degrees of declination here in Ohio, west. So if I just move this six degrees west, it automatically adjusts my compass so that when north is at the top, I have six degrees of westerly declination in that compass already factored in. So when I'm here and I turn it to north, it's going to add, okay? Now, once we have our declination set, not only does that offset our declination within the compass, it also offsets our bezel ring to these lines. And these lines inside the compass, these red lines, are called orienting lines. And these can turn your compass into a protractor with the map, so you don't need to carry a protractor if you're not trying to plug in grid coordinates. And all you're trying to do is make a circular azimuth of some sort to figure out where your azimuth reading is. You can do that using these lines. Inside the housing of your compass where the needle floats, there are lines in here that are called orienting lines. And those lines basically turn your compass into a protractor so that you don't need to carry one. And the way that works is, if I have two points on the map, one of them being a known point, I know where this is at. We talked about this in our travel the other day. We knew from base camp to where that point was and how to get there. If we wanted to travel a straight line distance from here to here, and we didn't know how to get there, but we know that we're going to go to this hilltop or this known point or somewhere else on the map. All we have to do is take our map and lay it on the ground. North is facing up, but that doesn't matter because the map is oriented north itself to the grid lines. Okay, the grid lines, the top of the map is grid north, no matter what direction you lay it on the ground. So now if we lay our compass on here and we put it between these two marks, just like this, as if we want to travel from point A to point B. And it's important to understand travel direction, okay? I'm traveling from here to here. So I want the front of my compass to show my travel direction. Then all I need to do is I need to rotate this housing until I get these lines lined up with a grid line underneath just like this. And I just slid that compass on the azimuth there until I lined up with a grid so I could put it right over the top of that grid line. It's important that north is at the top of my compass facing the top of the map at that point, okay? But the needle 
doesn't matter anymore. We're using this as a protractor. So I've got my north pointing up. I've got my grid lines lined up. And now, and now, at the top of my compass is my travel bearing to go from point A to point B. All right? And all I have to do is rotate my body till the needle's in the doghouse. And I have the proper orientation of my compass now and my travel path going this direction. Okay? And you can see that's opposite the map is because the map's laying toward the south. But all of that's arbitrary because we're using the compass now as a protractor, not as a compass. Until we pick it back up and put needle in the doghouse, and now we're traveling in an easterly direction, just like we would be on the map going from west to east. All right? The other thing that we can do with this very easily is because we have a centimeter scale on here, we can measure the distance between those two points. And it is about 750 meters or 7.5 centimeters, this being a 1 to 10,000 scale map, that's 750 meters. So now not only do I have a travel direction, I also have a distance. And I did all of that with my compass without orienting the map in any way or any other protractor or device. All I used was my map and my compass to get that. So this is a very good technique to use on the fly if you're out exploring an area and you're at a known point like this and you were to say, well, hey, I want to go to this hilltop or, hey, I want to go over here to the stream or, hey, I want to go back over here to this known point on the map here that I don't have a trail to. I want a straight line distance. I can get all of that on the fly just by throwing this map on the ground, throwing this compass on top of it, lining up the orienteering lines, making sure my compass is oriented so that the north is toward the top of the map when I lay it down and I'm good to go, all right? That's a very, very good technique. All right, guys, well, I apologize for the brevity of this segment of the video series. It doesn't take a whole lot to explain that, but it's a very, very good technique, again, that I don't see taught by anyone, so I wanted to make sure I got it in this series for you because it's great if you're out exploring an area and you have a map, and again, you're starting from a known point. That's what's important with this technique, and that you've got the declination plugged into your compass already, so you don't have to think about those calculations on the fly. It's basically just shoot it on the map, rotate your body till needles in the doghouse. You got a known distance, known direction, go. And then you've got a known location on the map again when you get to that point. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, and for our business. All of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks. Thanks.